We greet you all, our friends and our listeners, especially you, my enemies. I appreciate you. I appreciate your effort. You cannot become a skilled warrior, a Geba, without having a battle to fight in. I don't choose my battles. Yah chooses them for me, and I am very appreciative of that. So it makes me no difference what the battle is, whom the combatants are, because I have Teshua, victim. And Yoshua, Hamashiach. Those that rise up in judgment against his nation, he's going to condemn them all. That's a fact. And so I speak for no sympathy. I speak of the greatness of our Abba. His power. The Torah uses the words hacham. Hacham chol ya. Or hacham chol ya. Simply implying that he is the all-wise above. No other like him. He pacifies that with the word rib only. O-N-L-Y. There is none other that possess any kind of tangible characteristics as young. And he saw that in the bosom of his nation by the testimony and power of Yahshua HaMashiach. There's a writing in Torah. Where Shaul speaks unto Timothy as concerning those that they desire to be wise and to operate in the Ruach of they desire to be teachers of Torah. Yet they have no understanding of the Torah. For one to become skillful, one must labor. There is a degree of exerting oneself beyond the power of their own limitation. As the old folk who say, if you know what I mean... Whereby well, one has the ability uh, to go beyond their own power, their own exertation. When one says that I cannot, then one finds the resolve, the strength to go beyond that plateau. And in that they are able to excel. The reason we as a nation we don't excel because we are bound. By one of the most corrupt vehicles of impediment. And that's our own wicked, corrupt, damnable, corrupt, fleshly minds. And that's just fact. We got those that desire to be leaders and teachers. They have no understanding. They don't even understand what they say. Because Shaul says there is no affirmation in them. It is not even confirmed in their visage, their ponim, their actions, their activities. There must be an affirmation. When one say to the bride and the groom, you are now wedded. You see the affirmation of that in them. He smiles. She smiles, although it is one of frightening and intimidation. So the man has that understanding. You will see the affirmation in that man. He will affirm that by confirmation of his wisdom. I don't want to be anything that God doesn't intend for me to be. I have one passion in life to become a skilled warrior that when the king bids me to come that I can be a Uriah where nothing, no children, 
no wife, no heritage. I have no heritage in this land. I have no land to leave any sons and daughters. I have nothing for a wife to inherit. Nothing. So I am tied to nothing but him. Glad I don't. Don't want anything. I'm looking for the kingdom. By and by. When we overcome. When we all gather together in the Melchutz of Yah. I'm looking for that. So we have us that desire to be teachers. And we pontificate ourselves as teachers and leaders to run. Yet there is no bino, no understanding. Because if it is understanding, it is confirmed in us. I had one to send me some material this morning informing that they had traveled to Kenya. One of the most powerful quotes, men of God in Jesus, unquote. Is demonstrating the profound power of, quote, God in Jesus, unquote. That can be expressed by any human being. And so they sent me a link to identify this creature of darkness. The man travels the world, and the people are awed at him. He makes a statement, quote, if anyone cannot confirm with affirmation, even after you hear it, Show you that in Torah, Elias. This is the gullibility of man today. So as I scan and wait for him to open the book, in all of this profound vision that he had received from the heavens, he used not one chatuf. To confirm or affirm the vision. Well, of course, I could have shown him quite a few scriptures. For his main emphasis were on two words. The two rings. And yet the gullibility of that crowd, they sat, they embraced. So I responded to the person that sent me the message. I said, you go all the way to Kenya for this lie. I said, this man is from the convents of hell. He's a wicked man. He has not the ruach of Yah. I saw in places where it was in Germany or the Dominican Republic. This demonic power that you see in tribal warfare and when they take all the different drug-induced herbs and tree barks of the land and the mushrooms to create this euphoric of the gyration of the body. Yah commands us to dance before him. I said, he is a chief of the demonic powers. And of course, I left them my name. And I also obliged them to go again to Yahweh's sword. And listen, maybe you will grasp something. This is the gullibility of a nation of people. Every man is a teacher of Torah, but they have no understanding. 
Isn't it amazing that you cannot understand the science of man without a tremendous labor of discipline? Everything in life takes discipline. Whether you want to lose one pound or 50 pounds. If you're not disciplined, you will never lose one damn ounce. The way of Yah takes a discipline. An astute student that pays attention, listen, and has time for the most valuable things that Yah speaks. And one prepares oneself as a great warrior. Even when they don't feel like it. Even when there's opposition. Even when they have no understanding, they wait for the light to shine. A great warrior doesn't tell you what he knows, he shows you. And so when he walks, people see that. <clears throat> that is his affirmation. That they speak and they marvel at. That's a fact. I know it's right. So we have this superficial juvenile mentality. What this man did, he took from the Hive, the scripture, and he corrupted Torah to fit his false paradigm. And the people were raving for that. No. I will define things by the simplicity of elements and maintain that simplicity of Torah revelation. There are men that are much wiser, much smarter, much intellectual, and much more composed and capable of teaching with greater insight than me. But there is not one you're going to find that will teach it with the simplicity that I bring forth from Torah. And that stays to one subject. And all scripture brings forth light of that one subject. Fact. You can read all you want to. It doesn't mean a damn thing. I will prove that point today. I began this process of the dynamics of judgment, the mishpatim, the judicial process of Yah. I want to establish that by confirming one of the most powerful characteristics of Yah. It is the words. Uh, Chacham, wise, skill. Because every matter that we see, everything uh, that is created, uh, it has come from the one that understands all matter. He doesn't need to consult with us. He has no need to consult with his own mind because his mind is all wise. His mind is all wise. His mind is skillful. He is the Rashid, the begetting, the creation of everything. And until we understand that, we will not understand the beauty and the strength of judgment. There is a judicial process with Yah. He has the ability to make the final decision. He is the final arbiter. Well, we'll get that when we see him. No, we have it now. We sing the lies or we sing the truth greater or the power of his ruach. He is ruach. The testimony of Yahshua is in our bosom that is in me. Eh? That my own passion of worldly desires. Then my own striving 
for my own mandate. When a man becomes spiritual, when a man walks in the light, the wisdom, the discerning of Torah, only then he becomes spiritual. Because he judges every thought, he judges every concept, he judges his physical appearance, he judges his spiritual appearance, and then he judges all things. He will tell you when you're wrong. Because not only is there confirmation in him, he affirms who he is. And we must have that, Israel. We must have strong men, not little boys. Not emotionally twisted minded uh, little boys. You see the emotions on their face. And that's the truth. I'm not afraid to talk righteously. I don't give a damn who turn against me. Whether it's you, the children, your mama, it makes me no difference. Period. You're unfaithful anyway. You're not going to stand in the midst of great battles. God says to Gideon, you got too many. You will know that the ones that are famished, they'll do just like a dog. But the ones who've been down and watch themselves and see, there's a battle. And keep them. Only 300. We wallow in the stench of our own mire, our own tears. It's me. Damn you. I don't care who you are. I say it that way. I shall. To die for the confirmation. I want to be God. I want to confirm the awesomeness of Yah and show his credibility to do what he does. I'm not going to tell you where I'm preaching from. I will give you the book. When I was in school, you go to the universities of the colleges. There are things that the professor would teach. And say, I want you to find the matters concerning this, the matters concerning that. Give me clear, clear identity of this. We're going to talk about this, and I want you to make sure that. And so you have to research the book. But you maintain those vital words. And you do your research according to those principles. We have no time for you. We are foolish people. And that's why there must be judgment. We must understand the value and the importance of judgment. I want to speak from the Brit Hadassah and take us on a course today. One by the name of Shaul, he writes unto a faithful compadre. Timotheo, young man that had a great zeal of the wisdom of Yah because he had an Ema and a grandmother. They understood their places. They would lay hands on him and pray. Hell, how many times you laid hands on your children and prayed? They will lay hands on him. There is one thing I always do. I know children, they have no stable course when it comes to their little emotion. Well, I know you'll hear me singing up here with them because I know they're going to respond righteously every time. We don't. Some of us are dead as hell. This is all you get. That's all right. Because you have nothing in you to rejoice about. When I went to the stomping floor of the world, I had it in me before I went. I'm ready to go. You're not going to get me off course, all right? And so it's one thing I will always say to them. They can be fussing at each other. I say, lay hands on me. And pray for me. Yahweh, bless Papi, bless Ray. I'll just help him in Yahshua's name. And, and then they will begin to say, bless all the children to be tough and bless us to do right and, and to love. 
You got a damn video game for them, but no time for the principal. Always do that. Papa, I don't feel like praying. Pray anyway. I don't care what you say. Just pray for me. Just pray. I, I don't care how it sounds. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the discipline. There's nothing like discipline. That's what a tomid is, one that is disciplined. So he writes unto this young, beautiful man, knowing that he was full of the ruach. He explained the opposition that he would face against those that declared themselves to be wise in Torah. He said they don't even understand what they say. And there is no affirmation in them because if they did know, they would know the power of Yaz Hamashiach, the living words. So he was confirming to Timothy, don't be discouraged. And he gave him a profound statement of the dynamics of Yah's great power. He he said to him, now I want you to understand that Yah is the only eternal Melak. He is the great king. There's no kingdom without him. He is the great king. He is immortal. You can't express life without Yah. That's why we are lifeless. Because there is no expression of him. Oh, I'm going to break it down whereby it touches us all. I like that about me. Even when I talk to the Achim, I'm looking for the simplest of ways. I'm not looking for the hyperbole and the complicated uh, dimensions of a matter. You show me one plus one equals two. That's all I need. Once I discern from a man, he know you don't have to explain to me. And men tend to want to explain even more to affirm that they, I don't want to hear it. You don't have to tell me no more. I trust you in the matter. He is the only great eternal king. He is immortal. And then he is invisible. You don't see him. Yisra'ya, can I say this? There is only one son that has been given from the heavens. And that son is Yoshua HaMashiach. You can look up and say the weather is changing. It doesn't mean a damn thing. You can look one day and the skies are black. You say that's an omen. It's not an omen. Nothing. You don't re receive that great profound act. How are you going to receive something we show you today? He is invisible. And it says, He is the only, no other. He is the only wise Abad. There is no other one that is wise. So the matter of him, his composition, uh, is always wise. He is the only wise. He is the only wise. There is no other wise great Abba. Why? He is to be honored. He is to be esteemed, exalted. Uh, not just sometime, but forever and ever. So be it, so amen. Hallelujah. No other one that is wise. He is the only one that has the hukham. The skill of creating. The skill of making. The skill of closing and opening. That if he is only wise, then he has the ability to send forth his mishpatim. For a purpose to reveal unto a nation the value and the importance of it, Yisrael. There is no other one that is wise. He is the only. There is not one that can be compared to Omariya. God's there are many. 
And lords, there are many. But there is only one great Abba, one that is excellent in all of his might. And because he is all wise, there was only one way that he could express that to us uh, that could become a living dimension of our lives. And that's through the power of his Amashia. We let every kind of damnable thing live in our minds except truth. We should be reminded of our ways daily. We can see the kindness, the hasid, the steadfast love kindness of Yah. We should be reminded of our despicable, unclean ways. I want you all to listen to me, Yisrael. That's why I don't like to tell you where to put your books up. Don't worry about nothing. Just put them up, all right? Everybody close your books. Hell, we've done everything. Lord, I do everything but listen. Just put them up, Yisraya. When President Barack Obama speaks, you think you, everyone is attentive. Well, why can't we do that? That's why we don't know a damn thing. Listen. The same breath that he spoke to Timothy, he raised unto the scattered remnant throughout the empire of Rome. And so the book is entitled Roma Romia, uh, unto the Romans, unto a Gentile people that have become so a part of a corrupt system that they cannot see how fragile they were. And we are very fragile people. So he writes to give them confirmation and to affirm the one that they serve. And he concludes this letter like this. He said, but now as I write to you, it is made manifest what? He says, and by the kithve, by scripture, of the Navim, what has been confirmed by the writings of the prophet, the power of this witness of his Hamashiach? I will prove it today. He says, according to the mitzvah, the commandments of the everlasting Abar, he has given us commands and instructions. There's a reason why. In everything that Yah speaks to us, it is a musa. It is a, it is a discipline to discipline our lives uh, that we may walk according to his construct, his, his ways. Yes. If I'm drawn from some false delusional writings, you will know. Yeah. It doesn't mean a damn thing. You can mark, you can write down, you never look at it. Very few people do that. It's just a fact. When I was a student, I went for an interview for a job at IBM. So the woman that interviewed me, she was the manager. It was for a technician. And so when she looks at my grades, the question she proposed to me was this, quote, did you make these grades, unquote? She could see the very authenticity of the records of the college that I was attending. You cannot falsify that. And I knew from that point she was very afraid. And instead of hiring me because I would have to interact with some of the major core of executives in IBM Charlotte, she gave it to this silly, stupid individual and calls me one day and say it was so difficult between you and her. Well, I know it was. Because you did not want someone there that would show with excellence. I would have obeyed her commands. Sure would have. But you did not want anyone to reveal your like. And your immaturity. So you give it to someone that is as silly as you. It was a fact. And that's the way we are. 
A student is always comprehensive of the one that is luxury. Because they know that their knowledge, it has come by experience. You get nothing by reading. Huh? We need to stop doing that. You have six days to read. You come here, you come to listen. Now, I don't care if you don't like me. You listen to me, you become stronger. That's right. He says, according to the commands of the everlasting Abba, make known. See, that's why he wrote. He said, to all nations, he has made known to all nations. Why? Because the remnant is among all nations. To do what? To confirm uh, for the obedience unto the imuna, the faith, the imun. This is what this is all about. To confirm our faithfulness unto Yah. Has, it has nothing to do with you or me. It has to do with our commitment, our faithfulness unto Almighty Yah. And then he gives him a salutation of great comfort. He says, I'm talking about to the only, to the only wise Abba. He's the only one that is wise. He said, let that be great to fear wrath, great honor, great chabod. How? There's only one way. He says, through, through Yeshua HaMashiach. And the same phraseology, he says, forever, Olam Viat, Li Olam Viat, and forever. He says, so let it be confirmed. That's what Omen is. Let it be confirmed in us. Let it be confirmed by the affirmation of what is expressed in us. Let it be confirmed by our attitude, our ruach, our faithfulness unto the mitzvah. The works and the power of the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach. The word mitzvah carries a connotation more than this. It carries the connotation of the righteous works. The righteous obedience of Yah in Yahshua HaMashiach. To the righteous disciplines of Torah. To the excellence of Torah. Through Yahshua HaMashiach. So give us that preface. And I may go directly into the teaching on judgment. Mishpatim. Of Yah. Why? The reason. The purpose. I've always been a student. I would sit at the feet of Evangelist Hartsfield, ignorant. But I knew what he was saying to me was right. I didn't know the whole book, but I knew that he was speaking from the book. And I would sit for hours at his feet and listen. And although he spoke to an ignorant man because he was ignorant, I didn't challenge that. How does an ignorant man challenge another ignorant man? You're going to have fighting and wars. And I will listen to him. And then I will go search the book. Had my strong concordance. I will lay it open. He said those two words. I can't forget that. And could not forget it. Just like the Bereans. Because they were students of Torah. But when they heard that profound utterance, they began to search. They say, let us see if we can find the Torah. And they would search day and night, not to disprove, but to confirm with affirmation that the prophets and the messengers of Yah had already spoken that. You understand? And so the judgment of Yah, his utterance through Torah, is valuable to us, Yisrael. His judgment is a decoration to show us his authoritative power. He has the ability, because he is all wise, to assess us through a judicial process of Torah, the letter, and also the Ruach, the spirit of Torah. Yeah. That we may be confirmed as sons and daughters of Tizayon, Sion. Because there is a confirmation in us uh, 
It has been affirmed by the power of this vivid testimony, and it caused his great beauty, uh, his face, to shine upon us. We must understand that. I need the practical wisdom of Yah's Torah to refine my life according to what he commands. We're not going into the kingdom. I don't give a damn what you think because you're old and sickly. You're not going in. I want to teach today, all right? Hallelujah. I want to establish the premises. Of how this wisdom has been orchestrated or ordained by Yah to go forth. Listen to one of one of the most reputable milak. For the throne of David is Casey. Will never be dissolved. He will always cost one. Out of the bosom of Avraham to sit upon that throne. He should never go dormant with the heathen sitting in the place of the righteousness, the Sadiq of Yah. So what has Yah done for us to understand? Can I read it? So that we as a people, there would be no doubts what a true messenger speak. is found in one of the most prolific writings. Hear this in the book of Tehillim. I know you are Davis. I know what. You all are going to do, put the books down and listen today. This is what David says here. He calls him the sovereign Yah. He said, Almighty Yah, he gave. He nothan. He bestowed upon me. He prescribed this for me. Because the inscription is in my leba, in my mind. He said, Yah gave. He placed it. Nothan. He says, and Yah gave. He caused it to be dedicated and set apart. Who did he give it to? He gave the word, the Torah, the Dabari. Yes. And he tells us who he gave it to. He uses the word great. He says he gave it to a great or great was the company of those men that would publish or basa it. He gave it to a host of men to publish it. You must understand now judgment. He has given it to a host of men to publish it. If you read a newspaper, they, through demonstration of the language, they explain everything, don't they? They tie everything together. And so when this is bestowed upon a man, this Torah, this Mizorach, the teaching of the power of his living Torah, this man is able to publish it. When I saw that word, I say, Yeah, I, to Bazaar, I want to find out some of the inscriptions of that word. L let me show you what it means. It means to be fresh. That every time you hear the same thing, it is fresh. Yeah. To be fresh, full of rosary, the fragrance. How can a man that doesn't possess a sweet fragrant speak anything that will be refreshing to you? If he said to publish it, how can that be? It must be cheerful. That's what the word bazaar is. Cheerful. Uh, to announce the glad news. I announce to you the gladness of y'all's judgment. It's glad news. He must be a messenger. He preaches. He publishes. And after he's done all that, he must show forth that in his activities, his life. You think you're getting by, but we're not getting by. That's why we are men that want to be teachers of the things of Yah. But yet we don't understand the judgment of Yah. It is neither confirmed in us, neither is there an affirmation in us. We're just like children. We're not like children, forgive me, Yah. Children get upset and 
they get right the next minute. They don't hold things against each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means to bear it. To bring it. Or they would say, bring it on, baby. Bring it. You bring your game. You bring your A game. I'll bring my A game. I don't want anyone to bring a B game to me. Bring your A game. You better bring your A game to me. And one carries that. Also they preach. And then above all that they tell of the tough tides of this truth. He gave it to a great company of men to tell of this greatness. In the midst of their weary walk, they were not weary. In the midst of their agitation and battles, they were not battle weary. Uriah was not battle weary. Uriah, but everyone wants to be a Uriah. He was not battle weary. He said, I know I got a beautiful, a beautiful woman at home. But the command of the king is greater than that. Now now I have the virulence of life and longevity. But I will lay it down for the king. He had to judge himself. We don't judge ourselves. You know, I have never made myself too friendly or open with most men. Because I've, as a young 16, 17-year-old lad, I found them to be very disingenuine, unfaithful. I found that to be. Shirak says, if a man finds a friendship in this life, I'm going to teach them whether he has found a great treasure. What's a friend we have in Yeshua? And we say, yeah, I got a friend Yeshua. Greater is he. And if he is in you, then you are my friend because he is in me. So if a man finds one friend, the friendship, it doesn't say friendship. He has found a great treasure. Not just a treasure, but a great treasure. He has found a spectacular, splendid treasure. Just one friend. He has sent this forth by the great company of men. The speech, the actions, the activities. And to express the identity of the Most High. We despise his Musa because we don't understand Yah, neither do we know him. We don't understand the composition, even of his Mishpatim. When we see men and women, that have confirmed the truth of Yah. And even after they leave your presence, it affirms that this one is of Yah. Because you know they operate in this Ru'ak. Can I read it? Who at one of the most climactic times of their lives could speak with such clarity as Yachachan on here, in the writings of Gilead in the book of Revelation, he says, For we know Almighty Yah for Imat, or Imat, for true and so deep are his judgments. Do we understand the words truth, Imat, Imat? It has three characteristics of it. It is faithful, it is steadfast, it is the confirmation of Yah. That's what his judgment does. And is full of imats. For thine Torah is truth. 
He has a judicial process. Now, it's going to bring forth something. We'll get to that in the concluding of this teaching uh, at the third interval. All right? Uh, we must understand that uh, this man, this messenger, in one of the most trying, epic events of his life, uh, he utters unto the nation of his people, he says, for Emmet, for truth, and Sadiq are his judgments, his mishwatem. And the reason I become so aroused are you because you don't think that he is faithful. Nothing is right when it concerns you, is it? No kind of correction is right when you are corrected. But you have the goals and the audacity to judge and to correct others. You damn hypocrite. You will first get the beam out of your own damn wicked eyes, your eye and your stupid mind. Then the Torah says you can see clearly how to assist me and help me and refine me. We must have that. You don't comprehend all this trying to read while I'm talking. The first command that Yazi called you must shemach. Isn't that amazing? Let me show an example of that. I I'm going to teach today. We can listen to some of the most damnedest and dumbfoundest thing. Secular. You get out there with an ark and a hole. You don't open up the book and talk from that. You all just talk uh, from the shallowness of your own damn minds. Yeah. Yeah. Neither one open the book and say, okay, well, look what it says. Here. You don't do that. If you had that, you would keep a book always with you. Even when I was ignorant, I kept one with me. And I showed them, no, it says this right here. See what it says right there? Right here. You don't do that. And there's a sparring back and forward. Who's going to come out on the upper hand? Who's going to sound more convincing? Who's going to sound more wise? It is a testimony that it was of Yeshua. That speaks with great power. And you don't get offended. But if the messengers say, close the books, we get upset. You might as well love me. He tells us that the Mishpatim, the judgment of Yah, they, they are faithful and true. He says, for all Maria, he has already judged, condemned. Shafat, he has the ability to organize and to govern according to his skill, his wisdom. He is already judged. He calls her a zana, the great whore. Well, I know we think that, and I know that what Torah says, he's talking about Bavel. But what is Bavel? What is the mindset of Bavel? We are confused. We don't know what direction to go we are faithful for the moment we're on the, that's what the word when he talks about this greater or he's talking about the zana he's talking about those we are unfaithful he's talking about an unfaithful prostituting mind that loves sensual things more than he loves you that loves the god of this world the belly that you cater to uh, more than you love you He calls that the zana he has already judged. He has already condemned. And you think you're going to continue to walk in your unfaithfulness? You are a damn dog. Forgive me, your dogs are even faithful. Even with Lazarus, even the dogs look to... We're not even that. Keep on with your excuses and your reasons. You haven't prospered one damn thing by your stupid reasoning. It shows how unfaithful you are. He has already judged this great whore because everything she spews is whoredom. We teach one another how to be unfaithful. Daddies teach their daughters and sons how to be unfaithful. 
mama teach the daughters and sons how to be unfaithful? Huh? You might as well say help him, y'all. Yeah. Someone, 12, 14 p.m., emailed me and said, preach on. I had someone to send me his picture. He looked like a tough cat right down here in Charleston. Very handsome man, strong looking. And he wrote one thing. He said his picture to let me know, preach on, preach man. And he had a menacing look on his face to say, preach man. I'm a warrior. Cannot go around. He has already judged the great hope. Well, how did he judge her? In truth. What is truth is Torah. We don't judge ourselves by Torah. And Sadiq, the righteousness of Torah. Why? Because she has, because she did Shohath. Uh, we corrupt each other with our wicked ways. We take our corrupt actions to others. That's why you love to be whispers and lie and talk. You find one that is just as corrupt as you. You find one as wicked as you. You find one that is as vile as you. A whoremonging man, he doesn't want to hang around a cat that's straight. He wants someone that's talking the same talk he's talking. Same thing with a nasty woman. The Torah says that a whore and a whorish woman, she is jealous of the Sadiq woman. They prostitute their mind because... Uh, the element and the elements that are missing, that is the truth of Yah's judgment and how righteous it is to serve a purpose and a cause that will bring great riches unto us, Yisra Yah. Yah says that she has fornicated, prostituted, and she has spread this filth of her lies to everyone that will embrace it. And Yah says he's going to avenge the blood of his servants. Upon her. They have lied against the true messengers. And strengthened the hands of the evildoers. They have lied against the messengers of Yah. And strengthened their own lies and their own corruption. They lay upon their beds and they speak lies against his heritage. You're going to pay. If you don't know what you're saying, shut your damn mouth. If you have no full knowledge of it, shut your damn mouth you must have a witness that is in concert with what Torah says. And we take the witnesses of liars and thieves and corrupt ones. When one has a witness that is profound, others will see it. That's a fact, Israel. People can see things. We may not can, but people see things. They see strength in people. They see maturity. I said to my issue, isn't it amazing? Because at times I go places, are you boasting? No, I'm telling you. I make my boast in him. And I watch how people respond to me. I said, isn't it amazing? Because I had on a $15 jacket I bought from years ago. Don't even wear it. I just don't like thick coats. From down here at my store here, uh, Maxway, I had on used slacks that I bought from the flea market. And I said... And then there were those that I approached, and their whole countenance and the fullness of gladness changed. Well, good morning to you. How are you doing, sir? Strangers. That's the way it should be. We are so good, our people. We're precious in the sight of young. We must discipline ourselves. Everyone, as a soldier boy, when I was in the army, you go through the airports, when you see the Marines, they were spits and they were polished. They were refined and their clothing was tailored to their bodies. You didn't see one out of shape and overweight. Their waistline was refined and they all had those beautiful belts in those dress blues. And when they walked through the airport, everyone looked. Everybody. Their walk was upright and regal and strong. And when I would look at my army uniform, I felt the shame. It is the truth. 
Because they had a persona that was greater than the military, than the army. You saw them, you said, look at that boy. His heart was perfect. It sat perfectly on his head. The stupidness of his character, when he moved, you could see it. Why? Because they have been disciplined. Over and over have been beaten into them. You see those men today that were true Marines are still in them. You find those that were fake Marines, it's not in them. But you see some today, they still got it. It's just the truth. I got out of the military, my mother-in-law said to my Isha, Oh baby, he's running and getting in shape now, but all that will end. No. There's DNA in my blood. That those, I can stop doing something for six months and immediately, just one or two times, I'm back up to the same degree of strength as I was six months ago. We get this in us, we won't fail, y'all. We just need to get the, the good luth out of us. The bull, okay. For the tender ears, I won't say it now, but I will utter it, all right? So this is the power of the dimension of Yah's judgment. It is truth. It is not in righteousness. Well, that doesn't explain anything to me. Can I ask you all a question? What is the purpose? I want you to ponder this. What is the purpose of the Khidvi? What is the purpose of Torah? What is the purpose of uh, the utterance uh, of Yah's mouth? It can be summed up in two administrations of the book, two things that the book say. And I'll read them. One is found in 2 Timothy. Yeah, listen, 2 Timothy. If you are so consumed with remembering what I've said, listen to the message again. Then you can get clear understanding. Shaul writes unto this young act because he was having battle with some of the Zachayim, the old men that wanted to hold fast to their traditions. And it was making void the Torah of Yah. So he said, don't let them despise your young nature, young man. You stand strong. Because you know what is present in your life, what has been established in you. By the laying on the hand of even, he identified his grandmother, Eunice. How she had laid hands on you and prayed over you. To solidify that gift that was in you. So he writes unto Timotheus. He said, I want you to understand. He says, I know that Obadiah, he's a mighty man of Torah literacy. He's wise. He was one of the few that sat under the feet. You think that Shaul had his own personal copy of Torah? You think that every Pharisee has their own personal copy of Torah? Our ignorance is pronounced. They sat before men like Gameli. And they listened. And they heard. And they learned. They comprehend. It became interwoven in their hearts and their minds. They didn't have books like you sit here have. And they committed that word into the safekeeping of their hearts. And they remembered. So he said, you got profound men of great intellectual and spiritual audacity and learning. These are strong men, so you can't be weak. He said, but I want you to understand one thing. He tells this young man this, listen. He uses the words, kul, the whole, the four. He says, all chitve hachodash, all of the writing." All of the set-apart writing, even those that you have not had the ability to comprehend and to delve into the depths of Hanach and Jirak, he says, all Hidve, he said, it is given no fun. It is inscribed, prescribed, bestowed, he says, and he uses this word. He uses the word Nishachmach. He says, by Inspiration. What is that? It is the breath. It is the breath. It is the ruach of Yah. He said it is given unto us by inspiration. 
not of Obadiah, but of Yah. He said, it inspires you. And he gives him the categorically sequential purpose of all scripture. But what is it for? He says, it's given by the inspiration for Yah. He tells us, first of all, we don't say it that way. He says, it is yitron, it is profitable. It calls us to gain great access and wealth. You can tell a wealthy man. You can tell a poor man, can you not? You can tell one poor in spirit uh, and one rich in the, in the fiber of the richness uh, of the excitement of Yah. Yeah. I've told us the story I'll never forget. A uh, brother had invited us to this nice plush restaurant one day. And we went. And you knew this boy was wealthy. He had on a pair of alligator shoes. They were not plastic and fake. And the woman that was with him, she didn't have on no gawky jewelry, but you knew what she had on. It was the real stuff. So I looked at him. You could tell the suit that Italian wool that was fine. You could tell the coat he had on was a 3000 not that phony cashmere we get at the dollar mart. Fine cashmere. When he laid it on his back, you knew the man had money. I'll tell you what I had on. I had on the gray pinstripe suits with the white shirts. Never forget what they teal, just like that she got on necktie. He looks at me. He, he looks at me. He said, I like that necktie, man. I like it. I said, this? I said, I only paid six dollars for it. He said, I didn't ask you that. I don't care what you paid for it. Uh, he responded like that. Now, take that analogy. You have paid a hellacious price. Yeah. And he's not asking but one thing of us to obey and to understand the power of that price. So this rich man was letting me know, look, man, money is not even a factor when it comes to me. It's not a factor with money, with Yah. What could you pay him for his redemptive power? So this man was letting me know, man, money, that, that's not an issue. If it costs $1,000, I can buy it. I like it. So it's not a matter of money. I like that necktie. Well, you think that I was one that were verbose say, hold up my friend he taught me a valuable lesson that day I humbled myself we departed take care my friend he paid a price that, that is insurmountable no one could pay the price and so he gives us all of him in Keith Faye, all scripture he has inspired those many that he has given uh, this unto, as I read from Tehillim, that they may proclaim the power of this just like Shaul. He said, it is Yitron, it is for your advantage, it is profitable, it caused the excellence of Yah to shine forth. When a man has an excellent spirit of daughter, you can't see it in their face. You can see it in their countenance, their body. You can see it. You can pretend all you want to. But it's of no value. Hallelujah. He said it is profitable. He says unto lecha for doctrine. What is doctrine? So we can learn. So we can be taught. So we can be instructed. Sir. For what reason? That it may give us insight. That's what doctrine is. Lecha. It is to give us insight into Yah's mind. It's not all. Keep faith given by, this is what inspired the heart of Yah to give us this. Yeah. Oh, comes by the inspiration of Yah. And although what Shaul was said to Timothy, uh, it rebuked you, it corrects you, but it was inspired by the heart of Yah. Why yeah. uh, is that so difficult for us to understand? Uh, if it corrects us, uh, we, we're not inspired by it. Uh, it is his yitron. Uh, it causes us to advance spiritually and naturally. Uh, Cause us to show the excellence of his power and his ruach. And it causes us to do tough things. 
Now we will, as we will f- perform tough things. Damn hypocrites say they have tough works. You don't have no tough works. The judgment of Yah. It is profitable for doctrine. He says, and also for reproof. We don't like that one too way. But a mother or father reproved their child. It is a judgment that has been assessed through the judicial process of their heart, their love for the child. And they know they have made the correct decision, regardless of what the child thinks. Tell me what child, when they get a spanking, they think it's right. It's only when they get older they realize the value of that spanking. And when we become no more children that we have to have the simple milk that we can eat the meat of Yah's Torah, the breath of Lechem, the body of Yahshua, that's why we always turn against Him. That's why our minds are turned to the world. When He told them, you must eat my flesh and drink my dharma, He said they all turned and woke them. That's why our minds are always turning to the world. Because we don't want to eat this bread. Because if you eat it unworthy, you're going to die. You're going to die. He said it is for to have for correction. What is correction? To assess, to punish, to chastise, to make judgment. He says, and also one of the most profound things, it is for the Musa, the correction, it is for the instruction in what is righteous. In what is Sadiq. That's what Torah is. To instruct us. To discipline, uh, to discipline us. To correct us. To refine us. To judge us. Because I read that in Gilyana. That Yakahan says. Uh, that your judgment is in truth. And it is Sadiq. Shaul commands the same authority. But when he speaks to Timothy, it is one that is for instruction in what is Sadiq. His judgment is Sadiq. And the Torah is meant to instruct us to understand the judgment of Yah. For what reason, Yah? That above all things, that the man of Yah, we that are men, may be to me perfect. Complete, strong, willing, warriors. The man of Yah may be perfect, not just furnished, but he says thoroughly, thoroughly complete, thoroughly furnished. I was telling my Israel the other day, Shimri and I went down to visit person that we have done business with since we've been here. And I said to my Isha, that woman, they live in a barn that they fixed up. It's a very beautiful place. I recall Ox Simeon and I were there one day. We had difficulties getting the mattress down. To, they said, Rhea, can you all move this for us? We can't pick this up. And I said to my Isha, I said, the place is one of the most unique places you want to see. Very unique. I said, that woman got... She finds stuff in the dump, and she, but she arranged it in that house that everything is in its place. It is so thorough and complete. It's, it just, you just sat there and looked. I said, Rafa, she had one of the old bubblegum machines right there with bubblegum. And you, you would think it would be out of place, but nothing is out of place in that house. It is so thorough. It's just so amazing what she has done with this. I see old pieces of tin signs and all of that. It's immaculately clean. And my Israel says to me, yeah, I love the way she, that house that you took me to there in Monroe, it's, it was so neat. I say, this place, make that look like a little dump. Because she takes everything that is rejected and she makes it work. When we are thorough, we'll take every rebuke and we will make it work. When we are thoroughly furnished, we will take every counsel and it will enrich us. When we are thorough, we will, we will allow the correction of his advice to cause this yithron, this great power to see the excellence and the exceeding growth and maturity that we should have. Can I come on, man? 
we would see it. There's no way you can, it is no way you can go in that house and not be amazed with just some ten trinkets. And there's no way that one can see us and see the dynamics of the fruit of Torah and not be impressed. It's because we don't have it. Yeah, help me, yeah. I don't like hypocrites, no way. You all have to respond, that's all right. Can I move a little further? Now, Shaul gives us the inspired purpose of Torah. There's one that was wise and strong in the wisdom of Yah, that he had Yah's favor, and I'll show you why. He is known as the Kohelet, preacher man that declares the fullness of Yah's counsel. His name is Shalumo, and he speaks. He said, I've been counseled by all of the wisest of books and writings. I've had them to come from the far reaches of the earth to question me and to ask of my wisdom and try to cipher from the counsel of Yah. I've had them to come. He said, I've studied the papyri, the writings of some of the most brilliant, eloquent writers. I'm king. But through all that inspiration, I've come to one conclusion. He gives me the conclusion here in Kohelet. Listen. He says, I want you to let us, Jema, let us hear the whole or the conclusion, the suf, the end. This is the end of all scripture, all Kidve that Chau wrote unto Timothy about. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, M-A-T-T-E-R, the Daba, the word, the living Torah of Yah. He says, first of all, we must yare, we must fear, O Maria. We must be astounded, we must be awe-stricken, we must tremble, we must reverence. We see the sun rise, it should cause us to be at awe. Hell, we don't even look at the sun. Don't sit here, don't sit out there with your hypocritical ways and tell me, oh, the sun is nice, the shimmers, yeah, 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 and that's it. No, we're not all at the sun. We're not all at the, at the moon. I've seen the children up. Reaka. Ooh, that move. Ooh, ooh, re, ooh, ooh, ooh. So tell your daddy to take you so you can take pictures. And they become all at it. You don't do a damn thing. We would always position ourselves as though that we are so inspired by Yah. And the reason why, because we don't judge ourselves. You adults may look at, oh, look at that. Okay, and keep walking. The children say, I want to get a closer look. Take me to that daddy. Hell, we don't give a damn. It is the truth. But we are so enraptured with our own self righteousness that we hear something like that and we promote us. Yeah, that's the way I saw, I saw the sun. You see the moon the other night, you see. That's the way we are. And of course, you'll be talking about the moon to my brother. You know, Riyadh said about the moon. I read a scripture about the moon. That's how silly you are. That's how immature we are. You might as well say hallelujah. He said, this is the conclusion of all kids. They fear you You need to stand. You need to be afraid. He says... Fear Yah, and he tells us to Shema to keep, to keep, to guard, to, to be enshrined with the concept 
the gardens of Yah's Torah to keep. To listen to it, to take it. You can't listen to something when your mind is moved away from there instead of the Pacific. That's why I hate to see us when we sit here. That you're reading and you know that the messenger is teaching. You got so much to read. Go back and read it tonight. I hate that. You can't take it. You're listening to your mind. That's the truth. I don't give a damn if you don't love me, if you don't like me because of what I say. Don't tell me I'm cursing. We need to begin to refine ourselves and check ourselves. We don't want nobody to check us for us. You check everybody else. Oh, that brother ain't right. Oh, that sister, she, she, baby, she just did something that just ain't right. Now, you're, not, you're the ones that's not right. I don't want you looking in my closet, all right? That's why I don't ask you no questions about you. I don't ask you no questions about your past. I don't give a damn. Hallelujah. It's not my business. I don't need to know. Hallelujah. You understand? Hallelujah. I don't need to know that. Hallelujah. I'm a brand new me just because of your sure. I'm brand new. Oh, the way. I used to walk. I know you're waiting, but uh, I'm not going to give you that. Oh, I don't want no more since the power of the Torah came into my mind. So I got you. Oh, the way I used to talk. I'm afraid to talk that way because Yah guides every word. Oh, I speak of the tongue. The Tovaya because of Yah, sure dwelling in me. Oh, I speak. Gotcha, mama. There's a brother, he says to me, Ray, you know how to integrate. Even your stories are integrated within the context of what you're teaching. Mm hmm. He's got it right. Hallelujah. We must guard the mitzvah of Yah. Hallelujah. He said, for this is the whole duty. This is the essence, the whole duty of all mankind. All us that are men. Because one has the physicality of a person that one thinks that he is a man. That doesn't mean he's a man. One says, I take care of my children and I do that. Hell, the hood dogs do that. They buy pampers and make sure they got food and the woman's on welfare and they got all that. And they tell you, man, I'm a man. I take care of my children. Oh, well, make sure they got this and they got that. We think because we supply the menial necessities, y'all know what we have need of. Huh? We don't even have to ask him for bread or clothing. He supplies that. And that's this young generation. They got the similitude of the physical dynamics of a man. And yet, I'm a man. I said, come on, young. But he said, mankind. What is one that is a man that is the kind of a man? When he made man, he breathed the breath of life into him. He became a living nephesh. That's the only mankind he's talking about. He's not talking about these that are hard and have no, have no life for the rock. They're, they're drug lords out there by their babies, every damn thing it is. Uh, you tell me Puff Daddy Doe by his boy at $300,000 Mercedes Benz. Uh, he's a man, he's damn bisexual and all of that. That's not the power of a man. Don't write me. Don't call me. Because if you do, then you got questions about your manhood. You know the way I used to walk. I don't walk no more since the power of Yah came upon me. Oh, it came. I was traveling down the road on my way to hell, and Yahshua spoke to me. He said, Get up out of your ways. Follow the tour of Yah, and life shall fill you. Day and night, oh, I took he to the voice of Yah. Now I stand in His presence. 
Oh, I'm shouting in the rain. Your shoe, I hope. Sweet, sweet, precious name. Oh, shouting, dancing in the name of Yahshua. Oh, the sweetest, sweetest name you hear. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Gets you a little too emotional. I know what I'm doing. I was taking a class one time, public speaking. And it was a woman, she was a teacher, my instructor. She says, my friend, if you can take courses like public speaking, in essence, and voice dictation, she said, you could command with great authority. Great authority. The crowds will become amazed at your speech. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I did not. Because there are many that have that ability that has seduced the people. I want the voice, the call, the fullness of Yah. Arzakin taught us about the voice of Yah, didn't he? Same thing as Okul. I want that psalm to come forth out of me. This is our duty to fear Yah, to keep his commandment. For what reason? This is the whole duty of mankind, those that have the Ruach of Yah. That's mankind. That's the man that was created after the kind of Adam. These boys today are not created after the command of Torah. They don't come forth out of the command of Torah. Mommy is a slut of a hoe. And she got a hood rack of a dog over here pumping babies like a dog in the wild. She's wild as they come. It's the fact. I give you get mad at me. I want to try to inject a little fear in you today. Because judgment is real. We began to judge ourselves. We will have no need to no man judge us. We hate judgment. We don't understand the beauty of judgment, the purpose of judgment. We got Torah all wrong. We don't find the men that stand in awe. They don't fear young. Something wrong with you, man. Something wrong with you, woman. When we have a spirit that is so full of anger, we get, we become disposition because of the anger that rests in our foolish mind. You are a sick damn man. And if you get angry with me, you're going to get angry with someone else. You are sick, man. Woman, you are sick. We got the sick mindset today. And we don't want to deal with it because we, we don't want to deal with our ills, but we always can see the ills of others. I was out there driving T-Post the other day, nearly a hundred. Nice cold weather. And I was driving one this way. Bam. Bam. A T-post driver, I would say, we, we's at least 50 pounds. Not better. It's heavy. You wear yourself out if you, if, if you just... <laughs> it'll kill you. you. You'll be wore out within X amount of posts. I know how to drive it. Just take it. When I put it down, it's going in the ground. When I put it down, it's going in the ground. So I'm driving T-Post this way because I want everything to be parallel with the post, the strength of my post. And all of a sudden, something hit me like out of the heaven. Bah! I went to call it fair. Come over here. I don't know if I... Well, I'm trying to figure out what hit me. I'm like, how did I get hit? So I continued to drive. It almost knocked me out. It was like a blow from Tyson. Right there. No knot or not. I feel the see blood. Mama said, you didn't get a knot. So I told Uncle Simeon, he laughed. He said, man, <laughs> that, that thing is hard still. I know it. And so my Achio, we're there, and I'm driving. Bam, bam. And all of a sudden, the same blow. He didn't even see it when it hit me. He goes, whoa, 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 what's wrong? Well, you know, I let that thing slide down my hand all the way to the bottom. 
And when I picked it up, it just fell back and boom! Almost knocked me out. It's not light. And I said, yeah, I'll tell you what. You got me one time and the second time. But you won't get me again. So I knew to keep my hand, mama. And slide down there when I grab. <laughs> uh -huh. That knocked me out. I mean, knocked me clean out. So he corrects us, chasing us. And he corrects us often. Zaking warn us some. Keep the amen. And as y'all continue to correct us and reprove us, then he tells us then sudden destruction come, and that is without warning. Is there validity to that? Can I read this? Listen. We should hear this. Listen to this writer, this messenger, this strong messenger of Yah. His name is Kefa. Kefa, the way your phonics enunciated, Peter. He tells us that there is a um, a time precise order he says for the time has entered it has come it has entered in upon us and he talks about this day that he calls uh, the Yam Hadin the day where the judgment of Yah begins he said the time has come that the Yam Hadin or judgment must begin its Rishith the begetting, the process of the judicial process of Yah, it must be God at be it of Yah in the house of Yah right here. We don't want it to be God with us. It must be God in there. Yeah. I began this by teaching us that he is the only wise and he is a wise above. He is so wise. And one of the most intellectual teachers of the time, Shirak, he made a statement concerning the power and the principles of one that is wise. Just hold that and you thought, I'll get back. Shirak says this. He says, a wise Shafat, a wise judge. Yah is wise, isn't he? He said, a wise judge, this is what a wise teacher will do. This is what a wise judge shall do, a shafat, the one that governs, analyzes things by Torah. He says, instructs and educate his people. That's what a wise judge always does. Always instruct Musa, counsel, discipline, correct, and always bring them to a knowledge intellectually, spiritually, that they can equate the natural things and the order of things with the dynamics of Torah. See, that's what a wise judge does. He will always instruct us. What a man constantly judges himself, he instructs us with the confirmation and affirmation. You see it. You can look at him. You can look in his face. You can look. You know, in, in the day we would say, that you can look at someone and tell that their body you know, their body action speaks more than their, uh, their words. They contort their body. They move and they, they're shifting themselves. You know that. That's a, how do you think that judges and lawyers, because it's one thing about interrogation. They're looking at this criminal that is supposedly committed this crime. They don't immediately tell them the crime. They play on them a little bit, get them comfortable. And they get so relaxed, listen now that their body position is always the same. They're sitting there, yeah. No, man, I would, yeah, I was at home last night. Yeah, you could call my girl, she'll tell you. Yeah. Okay, John. All right, we'll confirm that. They'll call this girl and see. And they'll, one of the detectives go call the girl. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. He was here. We watched this movie called Cats Up in the, in the Attic. And all of a sudden, he throws something at him. He says, uh. Did you hear about that murder? And he, <clears throat> what murder? <clears throat> no, man, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> no, man, hey, hey, no, no, man, uh-uh. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. 
the body language speak. They have a detective out watching him. No, man, no. My, my word, man. No, man. Whoo, man. <laughs> okay, then, I, I'll be back. You want something? You want a soda pop or something? Yeah, yeah, give me. Because they know that his mouth is becoming parched. Need something to drink. Huh? That's how old folks had the ability to discern. That's why y'all discern among us, he can tell. Huh? What that look tells you, what that look tells you. I don't want to hear you, I'm kind of all standish you. This look tells me. This look tells me. It's not even penetrating the veneer. This look tells me. This tells me sober. This tells me what? Come on, Yisrael. It is right. I shall. The wise judge will instruct and educate his people. And then because he does that, the Torah says he is a prudent man. And he will govern the people with a substance of understanding. And everything that he speaks is well ordered. Everything I speak to you is ordered by the book. Yeah. Precepts upon pre lying here and there. And so it is well ordered, not just ordered, but well ordered. You go into a home that is well kept, you know that home is well kept. You look at a man, folks see people say, oh, you, oh you're taking care of yourself. You look so wonderful. Or you can keep a lawn up, but that's the difference between keeping a lawn up and well kept. Where I live, people used to drive down the street and they would stop and say, oh, your lawn. Oh, but will you do mine? No, I'm not going to do yours. I got time for that. Yeah, hard work keeping this pretty like that and that nice pattern. Once you get it, Mold in there. So you come down over that little hill, you will see that pattern. It was just laid in there. I remember Ishel coming. She said, oh, I want to step. Said, That's why I got it like that. So you can step on it, walk in and feel it. A bit different between keeping the lawn mold and well kept. And edging and cleaning up. We will allow weeds to grow in our minds and our hearts. Because we have not applied the proper, the proper destructive uh, uh, deterrence according to judgment. We haven't. And that's just the fact of the matter. And Kefa said that we know that the time has come that Yom Khadim, Khadim, the judgment must be begun at Yah's house. And then he gives us a clarification here. And if it off or the beginning of all judgment begins with us... He says, what shall the case, what shall be the summation or the end? What shall be the end of them that uh, obey not the bizurrach of Yah? Now, if we think we're obeying, this man taught us in the past couple of his teachings uh, concerning forgiving uh, and understanding that uh, it begins when we understand that our sins are so pronounced. We're so arrogant, we don't like to confess. I, very few men that I've found that will confess their ways. Man, I, they want to challenge me. Well, you can't, you come on. You can't hit hard as I hit. No, you can't. Mm -mm. No, son. You cannot. You may think you can. You cannot. Mm -mm. We don't confess our faults one to another. It's amazing that as he taught that, we can forgive our wicked sons and daughters over and over and over and over, yet we can't forgive Yisrael. We're going to deal with all that. We're going to see if the judgment of Yah is partial. We're going to deal with that.
Yet our wicked sons and daughters, we will delight when we see them. And yet we don't delight when we see the sons. I delight to see my Achim. Aksemion, you are being check on them. Oh, you trying to run their life? Don't be silly and stupid. I know they've been out there all day. How you doing, man? How you feel? Man, it was a rough one. I know it, man. We pray for them. Hell, we don't think about them. It's the damn truth. You're all not up when that man leaves him and he ends young. Hey, the time that I'm not up when he leaves, I don't care if he leaves at five in the morning. I'm up. I know when he leaves. Every morning. Hell, if he can get up that early, why can't I get up that early? He's up. Automatically, I don't need no alarm, alarm clock. Boom. I may get up one time in the night time to alleviate, alleviate myself. Very seldom when I do that. You don't drink all that soda pop dung and all that crazy mess. You drink water, you, you, your system will get right. You don't have to get up and urinating here and there. You don't have to do that. You just get your body right. I was thinking this morning, I wouldn't drink anything like a Coke or Pepsi. I, 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 I haven't drink something like that in so many, not, not just a few years. It's been so many years. That it was almost like a child's thing. I must confess to you all that somehow someone heard of that liking of my Jamaican ginger ale. And I had someone to ask me, Papi, can I have one? Please, please. All right. And so they sat and began to drink. And began to read natural this, natural that. Began to read off the ingredients. Ah, this is so tough. I wouldn't drink nothing like that. Well, I know I'm big and fat, but there are things I'm not going to eat. That's fact. I think I'm not going to eat. I don't think I'm going in these hog houses to eat. I could do my thing. You would not know. I could sit here and lie to you, but I wouldn't do it. That's me. You can't. I'm not going to kill myself that easy. Uh -uh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me some nice roasted lamb. I can roast some. We got enough to... Uh -huh. No, I don't cut it into chops and nothing. We just roast the whole thing and you eat it. It's all lamb's meat. Don't write and tell me you don't eat meat, so what? You're just weak. You're just weak, all right? How about that? Y'all said we can eat lamb's meat and goat's meat. If you had some of mine, you would eat it. I'm going to do me some guinea fowls here at the first of y'all's year. And they're going to be right. Fat, succulent, plump, and right. Listen to what Kepha says. He said that the judgment must begin with us. And it first began with us. What shall be the end of them that obey not the bizarach of Yah? And he gives us a confirming statement here. Listen to these words carefully. He says, and if the Sadiq, the Sadiqan, the righteous, he uses the word scarcely. Now, forefathers' language will be mi'at, small chance. So little of little that it's not even little to break it down to my comprehension. So when I search, the tremendous volumes of intellectual dispensing of linguistics, I found a definitive that maybe we can relate to. It uses the word scantly, scarcely, hardly. A snowball got a chance in hell better than that, hardly. 
is such a rare, even rarely seldom. It tells us just barely to the nourish of margarine that things that you can't, they cannot be off to one million of a millimeter of a degree. We throw the whole dynamics off. This man was the tool and I make it had to be perfect. You have to examine the blueprints, see how to make it, and I'm not a tool and I make it. You had to do a dry run to make sure that each instrument and measuring device had to be calibrated to the fullness. It was off one bit. The whole project was lost. The million dollar market was lost. The things that must be precise. Yah was precise in offering up his son. And damn it, if we think we're going to do it with some kind of fruity tooty lunatic way, uh, and this false reality of what is right, uh, it cannot be 99.9% as Zokim Bermin so often warns us. It must be complete. It must be Tomim. It must be perfect. We've got to scatly, we've got to narrowly. We don't want to understand the definitive of words. And that's why we mess up. Can I please? And then, with synonyms that agree with the word scarcely, it says this. I found this one in the Mariam Dictionary. Words coming from the College Dictionary of America. That's one of the things that I do pay for. I pay $2.99 a month because I can look up words that are beyond the ability to find in the volume of books. And I don't need the volume of books. In 10 years, you won't spend but $150. And it means this, above all those definitives, it means this. Probably not. They're not going to make it. Probably not. Probably not. So we don't take words to the core value. How can a man that doesn't understand words dynamics go to explain the power and the beauty of Torah? How can we as men, we don't even take time. Uh, we just talk because we've heard, uh, we repeat. We don't examine. Uh, one that is a bona fide lawyer that person will examine every little small, minute detail uh, of all of the forensics that's against his client. And he looks for the smallest of infractions uh, that you have defined as concretely as evident, uh, and he tears the whole case apart. Uh. How can we as a nation of men, uh, without thorough, you don't even know what, uh, you don't even know what the word probably means. We, pro we, we don't know what it means. We say, well, it means this probably. Well, well, you know, uh, uh, well, you, you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. I'm always looking. Are you trying to promote? You know I'm trying to promote the knowledge of Yah. To show us what little we know. You're reading. You don't even understand the words you're reading. Because you, it, it, they mean nothing to you. They mean nothing to you. But I'm reading a, a book of something. I will underline a word. Go back. I want to see what it means. Although I can enunciate it, I don't see what the word means. Why is this word here? So how can a man that thinks that can hardly talk, his language is so, so asinine and ignorant that how can he explain this profound truth? He cannot. He cannot. So what do we do as men? We confirm the power of this truth in us. And that the light, that his light or the light of the Ma'o, the beauty of Torah shine from us. And then men may see the light of his Torah in us, and then they will honor Yah because of your great light. I'm telling you all, that's why we got to watch our countenance. I'd say this all the time. You got to look at your ignorant, stupid countenance. It doesn't represent light. Our countenance doesn't. And we have to pay attention to that. 
We have to form and reshape ourselves daily according to the Torah of Yah. We have to put off the old man. You do that by judging the old man. We look at this certain type of a, 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 a countenance that doesn't shine forth the light of Yah. When men see that, they will, oh, he is so happy. Oh, he's so nice. They don't know that I'm a pit bull, man. I'm a, I'm a Rottweiler. They don't know that. There's this Arabic, every time he sees me, he's, oh, man. He said, I get such excitement when I talk to you. You always break things down. Now, I don't boast in that, Israel. Yeah, we are a nation of profound men and women. We have a great resource. We have one of the most brilliant scholars of all. We have a resource that is greater than any resource in the world. This book right here. We just need to get it here. We need to get it here in the hearts. When a man has a fit heart, a marathoner, he runs every day, doesn't he? Because he wants to show you how fit I am. When we get a fit ru'at, we will run this race that is set before us. We'll run the race. That's why the vitalness of judgment is so profound. We'll get to the depth of that in the teachings to come. I must teach this. Hallelujah. So if the righteous scarcely be delivered. Uh, he said, I want to ask you a question. Where shall the wicked, the rasha, and the sinners appear? If we that we think we're righteous. If we probably not going to make it. I'm so glad that you should pay the price. And so we must walk in the light of that Torah truth. We must eat that body daily. We must eat the lachim of the Torah. It's not as much as you talk, it's what you do. You can talk all damn day. You can talk about scripture. You can get in your conclaves and talk about scripture. It doesn't mean nothing unless there's a light of that shining from you. And men love to get together. You don't see a damn thing in them. When a man got this in him, you will see it. Uh, you will see the power of that. You will see the beauty. When a woman got it, she can shake. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Uh. You get this in your reel, you will know it. And that's just a fact. I hate that phoniness. I hate false men. I do. I, I don't like that. I, I don't, when I find men that are false, go ahead. I don't want to be around you. Go ahead. Go find someone else, man. You're not going to like me. That's right, hallelujah. We should let the light of yours truth shine. You don't let it shine because of your own wickedness. And men may see the power of his true judgment, his righteousness. And then they will ask you a question. You know, you look different. There's something about you. What is it? I don't care if you're old or young. I don't care if you got on $5 slacks or $10,000 suit. You got to be a fool to pay $10,000 for a suit. As far as I'm concerned, you got to be crazy to pay $200 for a suit. You got to be out of your whack to pay $150. I've never paid that much for a suit in all my life. We must understand that every, Yah does everything by a principle. Everything he does is by principle. And I want to reveal that to you, all right? From the wisdom of the Manu Shurrach, he says this. He says the works, the works, the mitzvah, the constitution of Yah. This is what he says, listen. The works of Yah are done in judgment. You judge everything? Well, in order for us to understand this great uh, revelation, uh, he must give us clarity of that as he speaks. And he, if he doesn't speak with great clarity to define uh, those words that all the works of Yah are done in judgment, then he is wrong. So he gives us the example. He says the works of Yah are done in judgment. Uh, and then he tells us from the receipt or from the beginning from the better sheets. Uh, he said, from the beginning of his creation. 
We see it from the beginning of his creation. So he gives us a pattern uh, of understanding uh, of what he was defining. He said that when he made all things, uh, he was the one that harats or he determined. uh, He was the one that had made the decision. Who makes our decision? Is it Yah or is it us? Uh, It is the Torah that makes the decision uh, because it grants life, Yisrael. Everything we do brings death. He was the one that harats. He said he made them by the division. He put a man in his place. He put the woman in her place. He drew the line for the sea and said, don't come beyond this line. Listen now. It says he arranged his works in an eternal order. How? By judgment. You don't go beyond that. You stand as the greater light. You stand there as the lesser light. It's amazing that this wicked word tells us that the sun is 93 million miles away. 93 million light away, away. And at the height of the summer, the summer looked just as close as the moon at night. And then yet they can jump on some little toy and run to the moon and jump off on the moon and bring back some moon rocks. So he set the big light here and said, you get over that. No, he set them right beside each other. He says that he arranged his works in an eternal order and the dominion for all generation that nothing changes. Night and day, sun and moon, ocean and river, river feeds ocean. He made it that way, that they stay in the same order. And then he gave us this clarity. He said they neither hunger nor do they grow weary. The river never gets weary by running. When there is no water in it, it never grows hungry because you still feel the resources of that. We should, we should not be weary at all in the midst of the great judgment of God when he corrects us. It should not make us weary. There's only one thing we should hunger for. For we should hunger and thirst for the righteous judgment of Yah. It's a righteous thing. They don't get weary. They don't get hungry. And he said they don't cease from their labor. They don't stop. The ocean never stops. It beats the shores. It churns at the depth and it never stops. This truth should churn in the depths of us. Uh, it should bring forth the living power of his, uh, of his identity, of his truth. Uh, in your sure Hamashiach, it is done by him constantly correcting us. Constantly. He said, don't do that again. Oh, stop that. And so when the baby just gets out of hand, mama puts a little caress. Ah, 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 until it f- finally cries itself to sleep. Put it in the cradle and it can't go any farther. It says this, they don't even crowd nor hinder one another's side. They don't do that. A righteous brother, a righteous sister will not crowd or hinder us. Well, one that hinder us from doing right, well, you don't have to do that. No, 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 you don't have to do it. Well, he said that. What did you say? If you, have you ever, ever said that? Have you ever done what you're accusing him of? Have you ever walked that way? Well, then you know what drew you into that. And if you learn by you teach her or him not to go that way again. The self-righteous attitude. And the reason is that way because we don't judge ourselves. And that's what it says about the order of God, everything he created. He said, and they will never disobey his word. I'm guilty, yeah. Torah commands us to obey them that have the authority over us to teach us the truth of God. If you don't believe I'm teaching you truth, don't listen to me. Go on, do your thing. You may be excellent at one thing, I'm excellent at this. The time you spent to learn that, I spent more time to understand this. Much as you've labored in that, I've labored in this. He did not give his gifts unto all men. He gave it unto Pacific men. And every man has not the gift of Yah. The Baptist whole house made your preacher and the church of God in Christ and the church of God. I knew what I was before I ever knew what a church of God was. And that's a fact. You are giving me understanding of teaching and revelation of truth uh, that I didn't even know. How did it come? Because I was able to hear men. 
even though in their ignorance, they had a learned ability that I didn't possess. Either, even when they were wicked men or righteous men, I will watch, I will watch the mannerism. I was taught that early on, the mannerism of a man. Watch the way he presents himself. Watch the way he walks. Watch the way he carries himself. I learned that as a young heathen in what we call the hood. You see those that were all of the way they dress and the way they carry themselves. And when they were coming to the house, the way they presented themselves. I watched the men that they would come and they were always refined. Their clothes were refined. And they would have on neckties and suits and they were always fixed up. It is right. To that mama, you're older than us all. But I remember that. So you know I recall it. I learned by the way of men. You learn nothing but about the way of men. You have not constituted nothing of yourself. They don't disobey Yah's word. Why? Because from the, Rish, the Rashith, he said everything in order by judgment. That's all we're going to set our lives in order by judgment. He must judge us. We must welcome the judgment of Yah. It is his correction. It is his love. We despise it because we don't love Yah. And we don't want about to judge us because we don't love Yah. And we pretend we love y'all. Someone say something to correct us like, who you think you, you is? Who you think you is? I know who you is. I know you're not a love of y'all. I know you're a false one. And I would not want to go to battle with you with no sword because you will forsake me, my friend. Who you think he is? I say things to watch the reaction of y'all's people, how they would respond from out there, how we respond in here. I know us. I do it for a purpose. He said, he really thinks he cares for me. She looking at me. Something suits you for now. And crushes us because we think uh, you can't tell me that. Yes, you go to the doctor, you believe everything he says? Yes, sir. Oh, I don't believe what he says. You're lying. You believe what he says. If you believe what he says, you will not try to do things to, to prevent. Because you believe what he says. You will not take the preventive. Because we're, we're so weak. You know, I listen to people. I say, oh, People are something. I was a doctor because I, I believe he would give me something to help. What's wrong with that? I'm not doing what they say. Well, I, I'm going to do what they say. I'm going to do it. You can get sleepy. It's amazing that you can sit in front of the damn computer and never get sleepy. Pecking and my spacing and all of that. Comes to your house, we get sleep and weary, don't we? You can watch the damn television all day long and never nod out. Comes to y'all, we get sleepy, we gotta. It's wrong. I don't like it. I don't like it. Look at who you are. Everything that distracts us, doesn't it? You got to look at that, that, you know. You're not listening. That's why you're so easily distracted. You know, son, I remember when I was in the military. It taught me one valuable lesson, my friend. Can I tell you? You know, back then I was only making $226 a month. That was a private. And these were Vietnam-era veterans, men that have been in the military, been in the two or three duties tours. I remember this old sergeant. We were out. That was the way you had to crawl to a foxhole, the way you inspected. Now this drill sergeant went down here in Columbia, South Carolina, always 100, 110 degrees. So he's out that way, ticks and everything. That's why they cut our hair like that. They don't cut it all off. But they cut it down low so you can see things. They don't, it was some reason that they didn't want, oh yeah, they, they would not let you get a ball head. Not, no, not in the army because they say it's not beneficial, it's not healthy for your scalp. So they leave a hair on there because if there was something that would grab the follicles, they would not get themselves rooted in the scalp. And so we were having this drill one day and you had to do it perfectly. You had to crawl a certain way. That was, that was this, uh, this course we had to take. And then you have to inspect the whole right. And then the drill sergeant was teaching us. It was 100 degree plus. It was hot. It was hot. And I found myself. When I did that. 
He said, you dog, get up. You get up, you pig. You sleep like that in the midst of battle, you'll do the same thing. He said, I'll tell you something, you coward. That's what he said to me. He said, if you don't go through this course right, you're going to get an Article 15. That was $175. My mama needed $100 of that every month. I would send $100. Isn't that amazing? I would send $100 every month. That left me with a ball of 23. I had an allotment going to my mother. I would leave with a ball, ball 23. That's $25 a week. And so he said, get up, pig. He said, you all stand back. And he was hoping that I miss it. My heart was toop, 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 toop. I was scared. But I, I had watched it too many times attentively. And I crawled and I did it right. Perfect. But after all of that, can I tell you what he made me do? He made me dig a hole. Nearly six feet deep. See, that's what you do. You dig your own hole into death. When we don't hear what God says, that we may have life. Why did he do that? Because he cared for me. He had watched too many soldiers get killed in Vietnam. And there was still a contingency of soldiers in Nam at any time we could have gone to Vietnam. And he cared enough. He didn't even know me. He cared enough. I said, boy, because you make the wrong move there, you don't know what's in that hole. You will kill you and all those with you. We need to train ourselves to be attentive. To stand at attention in Yah's house. Hallelujah. That's right, blessing. He said that what Yah has established by judgment, they don't crowd each other, they don't hinder each other, and they will never disobey the word of Yah. After this, Yah looked upon the Olam, the earth, and he filled it with tough things. He filled it with the great witness of truth. And Shurak says, with all manner of living being, he covered its surface thereof. Why? That they shall return unto it again. We're all going to return unto it again. We're going to return unto the earth. We came from dust. We're going back to dust. We're going to die. And the earth is going to consume what is his. Because everything was done in judgment. He made our bodies in judgment that we go back to what it came from. And everything that God does is done in judgment. Everything. And we can understand that. We can understand everything he does in judgment. We will never get hungry for the things of God. David said, feed me, Yah, until I want no more. In essence, you cannot talk to me enough about Yah. You cannot teach me the disciplines of Torah. You cannot express unto me. Let that be our conversation in our life. We don't want to talk about that. You talk about damn cupcakes and candy and, uh, uh, and chocolate chip cookies, but not Yah. We can laugh about folly and foolishness, but not Yah. We can surf the damn internet all day. Your language is wrong, man. No, your hearing is wrong. When Yah says to us, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know I knew you not. I yada, you never experienced me. What can be more defying than that? You are the transgressors of the Torah. You are a liar with your damn line. Jesus and your son, they lie. I'm not going to stop saying it that way. If we're going to be hated for his name's sake, for the purpose of his name, hell, everybody love the name of Jesus. Faggots get married in that name. Dogs get married in that name. The clans love it. Everybody love it. The haters love it. You mention the name of your shoulder, then they will rise out with the venomous poison. That's a fact. That alone ought to tell you something. And they don't want to be around you because of that name. As long as you talk to Jesus, talk, they all want to be around you. You lie in Hebrews, you call yourself, you're liars. You got a Hebrew name and you call on a, a damn pagan liar, judgment shall rust upon you. You think these folks don't know about me? You're, you're wrong. I was talking to Akhmi Kaya. It makes no difference how long they stayed on there. Just in the last two weeks, the last two weeks, from the 3rd of January to the 17th, 
There were people from 114 nations that came to the site. From Singapore to Morocco, from Russia down to China, from Iraq, from Iran, the United Kingdom, from every nation. They come. I don't care if they stumble upon it. It was but for a minute they were there. From New Zealand all the way from Australia. I said to him, I began to show him just the states, every state in the United States, from Washington State to Washington, D.C., from North Dakota to Wyoming, from Idaho all the way down to the shores of Texas, from Texas to Maine, from Maine dropping down to the smallness of Vermont. I said, it's amazing that the amount of people but very little confirmation as to people contacting me. I'm not disappointed. I'm not. I'm not sad. I don't need no following. I don't want you to follow me. You follow truth. As I follow truth, you follow the truth in me. You're not going to challenge me where I'm erring when you don't even have the light to shine with the brilliancy of the knowledge of Torah. So don't come and try to correct me. Not, and if you are him, I love you. Your way, the way you walk, your beauty. It's your beauty that corrects me. It's your appreciation that makes me. That's what makes me not want to fall and to do right. Not some self-righteousness. Your commitment makes and drives me to do right. That's what caused me to be inspired. The daughters of Tizayon, their beauty caused me to honor the beauty of the daughters. Not that I'm cold and don't talk to the daughters of Tizayon. That's not it. To honor their beauty and to honor your head. Much dogs take advantage. I kill a bastard like that. Calling themselves and knowing the truth, and then they were beasts. I don't like men like that. I don't like them. I don't like that kind of a man. I don't like that kind of a woman. They got this unclean spirit, what meant to look at her and what meant to want her. I don't like that kind of a woman. She ain't worth a damn. I don't care if it's your mama. I don't care if it's your grandmama. I don't care if it's you. You're not worth a damn. I don't care if a woman is single, she keep her mind pure and on the yard. She doesn't dress to entice the looks of a man. Hell, you're dressing and your bodies ain't drawing nobody. All of us. All of us. You ain't got no fine body. You got to have something greater than a fine body. You got to have a beauty that is more pronounced than your body. Or your covetous or, or your voluptuous stuff. And man, you got to have something more than that little chest of yours, a little flat chest. You think you're looking fine. You think you got something. You don't have a damn thing. None of us. Hallelujah. All flesh is as grass. Yes. There's no damn value. You think you got something. You think you're walking and you holding. What are you holding? You're holding nothing but flab. You look a mess, man. Stop it. Stop kidding yourself. It's not that, daughters. Let these fools tell you that. You need the persistence of judgment. Yes. Mother, judge your daughter. Don't go that way. Don't, don't, I, I don't care how these boys look at you. Don't, don't give them. As a matter of fact, daughters, you should be shamefaced. Yeah. Y'all never command you to have a damn boyfriend yeah. or girlfriend. It's wrong. Yeah. It's wicked. Yeah. Not even among the children of y'all. Yeah. You don't have no boyfriend or no girlfriend. Yeah. That's just a fact. And teach your daughter to lie. You, you had a damn boyfriend. What did it do to you? It made you out of a damn whore. Yeah. And it made you out of a faggot of a boy, didn't it? Oh, yeah. You might as well talk to me. Yeah. Made you a whore woman. Made you, you made you sell yourself a damn cheeseburger oh, to a young faggot of a boy. Oh, Let's get real. Yeah. You keep yourself pure. Yeah. And come to that time a man will desire you. Yeah. You'll, be, you'll be a virtuous woman. You have a price far more than your mama or your, your daddy had. Your price will be so great that men will pay. They will be willing to give all for you. 
Let's get real. That's what you put in your daughters and sons. No, that's what you teach your little girls. You don't hide that from them. That's what mama teach them. Teach them to be chaste and beautiful. That's what the world does. Have your party. You have no party for them. Although I said to the little girls, I said, when we get that building built down there, well, I don't like to use slumber. I said, but you're all going to be able to go over there and go upstairs and run. It's going to be nice. You all will get together and have some pizza, ice cream. That's right, I said ice cream. And I'll buy it too. And popsicles. Shut them windows off and nobody's going to be able to see you all. You all going to have fun. Then the boys too. They were swinging down from that, from that attic. Up. I can see him now. Put a rope up there for him so he can slide down and, and jump all the way down. Maybe a trampoline in there so he'll jump up on that. He, he'll jump. Believe me, he'll jump up on that. That's what we do. We make our children to love the creativity and the beauty of Yah. Hallelujah. We're so damn lazy and slothful and wicked. Yes. We love sleeping and slumbering and we have poverty in our loins. Yeah. Hell, the daughters of Tizion, get out of it and walk and do something yeah. to embrace one another, to share your love with each other. Yeah. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. Yeah. Crazy women doing such crazy stupidity. Yeah. I will, man. Same thing with us, see men. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You teach them to fear Yah. That's the only thing your mother should teach you. Your daddy should teach your daughters and sons. Teach them to fear Yah. And when they're old, they won't go away from that. Hallelujah. You can't walk like a damn hypocrite. You walk that way because you reject the judgment of Yah. You old women learn how to be kind and sweet. Your young daughters learn how to regard and to respect. And listen. I said again, I've never talked to my mother-in-law. That's all right. Don't, don't do him like that. I, I've never talked to my mother-in-law. I've never, Emma, I'm, I've never talked to Mother Smith to disrespect her. Even though I was a man. She didn't want me to marry her. I've never disrespected that woman. Never disrespected her mother. Never. I've never done that. I didn't talk to my mother like my brothers and sisters. I didn't do that. I've never talked to my aunt any kind of way and say, yo, heifer. I've never talked to my aunt that way. Never. I've never gone that way. And that's a fact. Because it brings life. That's why I'm alive today. And they are dead. Trespasses in their sins. Never disrespected old people. I learned that. I don't care what the old person is to me. I've never talked. Well, hold up. Never done that. I've never done that. Never. Give a damn what anyone says. Yes, no, I have never done that. I don't care how wrong they were. Young man, I've never done that. That's a fact. Never. Never. This is a generation that they don't care because there's no correction of Yah's judgment. And say to you daughters of Tizan, you elderly women, you teach them the beauty of that strength. By judging yourself. No, you'll tell them, well, I know I don't do it, but you know, you just got to make the decision for yourself. That's a damn lie. That's a damn lie. The Torah has made the decision. From the beginning, Yah made the decision by judgment. He put you in a place to show them and to teach them the beauty of judgment. And what it produced, uh, an excellent of your beauty. From the beginning, he put it there. So give me that bullshit. And so we won't evade our responsibility. Well, it's all the system. No, it's you, you damn hypocrite. You are a liar. You are wicked. You are wrong, man. Yeah. Well, the brothers don't like me because I'm knowledgeable. If you were that knowledgeable, uh, it would be seen in your countenance, in your labor, and your work. You will see it. Uh. You had all that in you. Be, come on, I don't care what your conditions are. You will be strong. Why? Because it is the joy of Yah that brings strength unto us. When we don't feel like when Mama didn't feel like going to that damn cotton field, she went because she had joy in Yah. She had joy in the responsibility of our house. So don't give me that bullshit thing. 
You can tell that lie to someone else. Uh, you're not going to tell me that. Uh, oh, I love you. I got great. You don't have no strength. Uh, joy of yours, my uh, What makes me strong? Make me get up when I can't get up. You tell that lie to someone else. You can trick someone else. Don't come to me talking that way. Is that all right, Mama? I'm going to conclude with a few things today. I'm going to stop here in the book of Baruch. Give us a little insight. We understand this instrument that we call judgment, its purpose and the power of it. Now who could speak with such great wisdom when he was the scribe of Yeremiah that he wrote down the commands not only did he see this, but he wrote this. And not only did he write it on the parchment, but it was written in his heart. But Baruch, Baruch, Barach, but Baruch, he could see that. And it was by the experience and the wisdom of the writing, the chattab of those words, uh, that that experience began to, re to be revealed out of the writings of Baruch. And the little things that Yeremiah, or he missed what Yeremiah said, uh, then Yah refined it through the very words of Baruch. That's what he did. He speaks here of the great instruments of judgment, and the judgment of Yah. He speaks of the coming Hamashiach. He speaks of the coming of his living Torah. And he speaks here. Shalomo, I want to begin with this. Shalomo speaks out of the book of wisdom, and I want to show you how Baruch speaks of this great wisdom. But Shalomo says this. He says, uh, he shall put on Sadiq, the righteousness of the character of Yah. He says, as a koshin or the breastplate. And you know we have a teaching on the Orim, what the Kohan wore. You understand? And also in the Talmud, these were the pouches representing the heart and the mind, whereby the stone was Yoshua, that chief cornerstone. And upon that, upon the truth of that, is what this principle of Yah, even that stone, is built upon. Now what we need men to understand that word, stone, and research that. That's why we got all the men here like that. You all. You bring out the fullness of that. Not just talking about it. You got to bring up line upon line, a sequential uh, uh, type of wisdom of that. That's how you study, old men. You don't really, you study those things. You hear something the messengers say, and you take that, you take it upon yourself and say, I'm going to develop a teaching on that. He says, uh, and this is what Yah does. And this is what Yahshua has done. And he has, in his breastplate, uh, he has put on true, true, impartial judgment, justice, instead of a helmet. The helmet is always meant for battle. It always brings deliverance. But this is, yeah, he is impartial in his judgment. We're not impartial, are we? It says in the book of wisdom, this is the character of Yah. Your sure came in this dimension. He puts just like the Kohan. Just like I read to us on Kitve Imat. It commands us to fear Yah. Fear Yah and honor the Kohan, the Kohen, those that live in Torah, that you may prosper, you may have health. I'm going to stop here. I want to read one thing and I'm going to stop here, all right? It says that he should, he should judge with impartial judgment instead of a helmet. Now Baruch, Baruch reads right from the very profoundness of Shalomo's wisdom in Second Baruch, he says, uh, he talks about the greatness of Yah's judgment. And I want to stop here because we're going to continue here next week. We got much to this. He tells us of the great assurance and the blessings that Yah has poured upon us. He says that Yah has given you, Yisraeliah, the clarified wine, the Yayin, the freshest of all fruits. Is not your sure the freshest of the fruit? That's why he said, I will drink wine no more until we drink it in the kingdom. You're going to get the clarified. 
He's given us to drink the clarified wine. And he said, yet you drink dredge. You drink the puke. You drink the trash. Don't we drink trashy stuff? Yeah, we do. He's like giving you truth and you're sure drink that. But you love trash. He tells us, for the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, the Most High, it is impartial. It is impartial. You better remember that it's impartial. You are impartial. My actions are impartial to that. No, I want to always guard myself. I would rather accept the blame that the judge, this man or that one, and to be partial. I said, I take every responsibility of anything that goes wrong around here. I don't give the wheelbarrow. I said, okay, that's, that's my bag. When I said, man, I told you to do that. You, that's all right. I was wrong. I don't mind saying that. Very few men would say I'm wrong. Yeah. Only the beautiful man can say I was wrong. That's why at home as this Achim this taught us uh, that he wants to hide and say it was the woman. That's where we are. Well, well, that's an impartial judgment. Y'all's judgment is not impartial. You will judge me. You will judge your 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 achim, your achim. You don't judge you by the same spirit. You don't say I'm a lifeless piece of dog of a man. You don't say I'm a filthy Jezebel that I talk like. You don't say that, but you will say, "Well, they're wrong. He's wrong." Might as well love me, mama. This is what it says. I'm going to stop here. Therefore, therefore, yeah, because he's an impartial. Therefore, therefore, he did not even spare his own sons. He didn't spare Yahshua Hamashim. Because his judgment is so right. Your judgment won't spare you. It won't spare son, daughter, brother, wife, husband. That's impartial judgment. Because when you're impartial in your judgment, there's a seed of corruption. That's why the messengers, you don't take gifts from men because they corrupt your judgment. Therefore, he did not spare Abraham. He did not spare his sons, Yaqub, to go into the land of Misraim and for the heart bondage of 400 years. He did not even spare his sons. You will spare your son or your daughter. Well, you don't know if they're not right. Well, I can look at you because you're not just right. And they took anything from your dynamics and they're not right. He did not spare his own sons first. Where the judgment began? In Yah's house. He's not going to spare us. He's not going to pity us. That's the reason why. That's why he sends judgment. That's why he sends judgment. To make us wise. To make us strong. But he, Sarah, he afflicted. He afflicted. Many, many, rap, rap, many are the afflictions of the Sadiq. But Yah, he, Yashach, he delivers. He saved them from not some, but from them call. All of the judgments of Yah are true and they're just. He delivers them. We don't know that because we don't really study Torah, Israel. Yeah. We read for excitement to become granddaughters and say, I read that. Yeah. That's the only reason. Yeah. It doesn't, we read when we read Torah, even when you read, it's to bring an experience with Yah. People get so absorbed with novels, though, they can read stories, and they become almost intimate and a part of that process, don't they? That's what Torah is for. We must become intimate with it. It becomes a process in our life. It processes our lives. And we process every, everything to Torah. The people that watch certain stories on television, they wait every week for that. And they can watch the rewinds over two or three times, can't they? Come on. 
I'm not telling us this to destroy us. I'm telling us this to destroy the will and that corrupt thing of our flesh. That we may shine as beautiful sons and daughters of Yah and learning how to truly love each other instead of this damn false pseudo, pseudo, pseudo type of love. And that we have this tremendous steadfast love kindness, this hostility, this kindness that is beyond expressive superlatives. That it is more than felt. It caused the heart to weep and to be fat. There's nothing like old men to me that are beautiful and genuine. I love that. I love you elderly women. I do. I don't disregard you, but I love to see older men that are so sound and so beautiful and so, so in tune with Yah. Their ruach is quiet. You see them even when you are down, just their presence make you feel happy. I don't like to see that in men whereby when you see them, this, 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 this kind of deformed countenance, that's not tough. You train yourself. I don't care how you feel. You say people look at you. Well, I don't have no stroll on my face when I go. I'm just, I go. I'm not. <laughs> how am I doing that? But my countenance is sure. So when people see me, they, you know, just, I just have a sure countenance. It is sad as we grow older. I talked to an old man yesterday. He said, Ray, up. He said, my son said to me, he said, Ray, up is so right. How can we understand things without understanding how the concept was developed by not understanding words? He said, he says that even the messages you sent us that we listen to, we listen to, he always repeats that. I said, you all go back to the website. Get some more. I didn't say get some more. Young man called me. Yes, I said, man, we have hundreds and hundreds. Of... Go there and listen. Don't call me with that. I want to know if it's an open house. I said, I say, even prison is not an open house. I say, nothing is an open house here. Well, I want to come. I say, you get to do anything you want to do, don't you? If you had to do something, you make a way to do it. He said, yeah, you're right. I said, then you, you find a way to get here. And if he showed me that kind of spirit, who knows what I may do for him. I said, don't you just call me and expect me to answer you every time. Yes, sir. You don't want to leave no message because uh, I don't answer it. You get calls all the time like that, folks. Because no one answers, they hang up. I don't, I'm not calling you back. I'm not calling you back. Listen to this in my closing. Therefore he spared not his own son, but he afflicted them. How? As his, as his enemies. Why? Because they sinned. Because they sinned. Because we sin, we transgress, we defy. We're adamantly against Torah. Torah always corrects. Torah judge. That's why it is a Torah. It is a law of the conscience, a law of the will. Because we sin. A self pride, a self grandizing ways. We think we have something that is grander than others. We're all filthy flesh. Your fingernails get dirty just like mine. You wake up in the morning and if you get a whimp, you smell under that as well. Free. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. Who are you going over? No, this is Yah's day. This is the Shabbat. It's the day of rest. And he has sent forth his Shabbat. His judgment upon a nation. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. And turn toward Yerushalayim and all things we debarak you are about. We told you for your kindness, your mercies, your correction, your judgment. We are but mere creatures and we know we cannot do it. But through you and your Hamashiach, your blessed anointed one. So as we journey from this place, as our Zahim, Yaramaya would say, those that have 
come to fellowship, the live stream, or either here physically, bless them and enrich them, strengthen them, touch them mightily, and cause their hearts to be fat. We told the you for our friends, bless them all, the gifts of this week. We pray for our, our Kesner and they there in Tampa, Akiyako. We pray for the meeting that our Zakhin Yaramaya will be there to teach, to preach, and to bring wisdom to Torah as our Akhya Akop there in Jacksonville as they work. Give us favor with those whereby we will meet. And those that are in that area that we may solidify things soon that they will have amp time to come and be in the fellowship as he and his precious Isha will supply the food and the, the hotel room of gathering. Bless them, I pray. We ask your riches upon us all and our precious friend there, young friend there in Cincinnati, our precious friend, Sophonia, yes, yes. that he demonstrate, yeah, that we don't understand that even in our battles and our attitudes that shift, that this young man, yeah, that you have kept him, you have preserved him, so we pray for him in the midst of his battles. We pray for all those in the midst of their battles. You bless our young friend, our young friend, Sophonia Yisraya. Strengthen his ima, his avat, that has loved him and kind. Just bless them, I pray. And touch all of your nation, your people, are Zachain Tayonia, Zachain Davis there, and those gathered with him there. Yahweh's house of Yah there in Los Angeles. And those that we haven't heard from, our Achwim and Chol Tiffany and the family, bless them. And all those, we pray for Im Miriam, we pray you bless. And also, Achot Yolanda, you strengthen her and even... We pray for Hot Yara there in Jamaica. Touch I pray, Ya. Hot Marian, and all your nation of people. We pray for our Achia Akop there in, in Dallas, Texas. A great friend and a faithful man over the many years. Never complain, Ya. Just bless him, his house, his wife, his children. We pray for all those, Ya, and their giving. Their kindness, our hope, Sylvia, there in California, right in California. We pray for our hope, Venezuela, there in Texas, their kind given. We pray for them all. Our hope, Blackman, there in New Jersey. All of the Chothim, the Achim, yeah, those that have been such blessings of inspiration to the labor, and they give our precious hope. Lucretia, there in West Virginia, bless her. Her kind faithfulness, our act. Frank there in West Virginia, bless and touch him, Ya, yeah. and all of our friends. You know them, Ya. Yeah. Strengthen them in Yahshua's name. And give us the guidance of your Torah. We will know we'll guide it by our great rejoicing and the fatness of our heart for all that you do. Bless all the Zachim, male and female, Ya. Yeah. Bless them. The Ima, bless them. The, in the Avat. Father of fathers, strengthen our children. Bless this community. Touch the bodies of those that need a touch. Each one of them, the Ima, battling, having pain. We pray for them. And just go with your people this day. We ask in Yahshua's name and help us to have this great anointing of your kindness of love one for the other. And above all things, Yah, we all have sinned and fallen short. There's no greatness among us the greatness is the one's ability to submit and serve one another to strengthen to help so help us all we are all in the same predicament your judgment began with us your ruach the world so help us all and strengthen us your shoes mighty name those that join us for the live broadcast bless their ears to hear your truth and that they will allow it to conform them as we must hear we ask all things in that blessed assurance of the only name given unto us, Yeshua HaMashiach. We cry out unto you, our Abba, Yah, in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.